The UN's nuclear energy agency expressed, quote, deep and increasing concern about Iran's nuclear program in a resolution approved today at a meeting in Vienna. It's the latest development after the International Atomic Energy Agency released a controversial report on the intentions of Iran's nuclear program. Iran maintains its program is for peaceful means. Saida Jamshidi and Catherine Prangaman filed this report. Last week, the UN's International Atomic Energy Agency, or IAEA, released a much-anticipated report that tried to shed more light on Iran's nuclear program. In this report, the agency declared that they have credible evidence that Iran intends to build a nuclear bomb, prompting many in the international community to intensify their criticism of the country. But some question the contents of the report and suggest the evidence is incomplete. Barbara Slavin is a fellow at the Atlantic Council, a Washington, D.C. think tank. She says the language of the IAEA report in 2011 is not as firm and conclusive compared to the agency's report in 2003 on the same subject. It uses the, the verb may be continuing rather than has continued. And it has um, less good sourcing. For example, it has only one uh, member of the IAEA providing information that Iran tried to manufacture um, a neutron initiator. The uranium enrichment process starts off the same for both commercial nuclear power and for nuclear weapons. The IAEA reported that Iran has over 6,600 working centrifuge machines at the enrichment facilities. Todd Allen, a Universal Wisconsin professor of nuclear engineering, says that producing a large number of centrifuges raises eyebrow in the West. And it's one of the reasons why people are suspicious of what they're doing. Right? Because if you're going to make commercial fuel, you do have to enrich it to about 5%. So if you built a bunch of centrifuges, you can claim that you're just doing that to make commercial f fuel. But if you, if you have more centrifuges, then you keep things going and then you enrich it more and you make weapons. While commercial plants enrich uranium to 5%, weapon-grade uranium is around 80%. According to the IAEA, Iran is currently enriching to 20% for use in their research reactors. Iran always insisted on its program's peaceful purposes, yet Iran failed to report its nuclear plans in different parts of the country to the IAEA. The lack of mutual trust between Iran, Israel, and Western powers has escalated tensions. Some are concerned about Israel's carrying out a preemptive strike on Iran's nuclear facilities, citing the country's preemptive attack on Iraq's nuclear in 1981 and against Lebanon's Hezbollah in 2006. Slavin says the military strike would be taking a drastic step against Iran. You know, even if Iran has been researching how to build the weapon, that's still not a cause for war. Iran doesn't have one yet. Uh, it certainly hasn't used one. And we've learned, especially from Iraq, uh, you know, that you don't start a war uh, without thinking carefully about what the consequences are. Some analysts say Israel cannot go to war without a green light from the United States. Reza Marashi, director of research on the National Iranian American Council, says the pressure against Iran has to be carefully calculated. When you keep increasing pressure without uh, a valve to release some of the pressure through negotiations or diplomacy, uh, that's when you can spiral into a very dangerous uh, cycle of violence. Another analyst, Iranian-born fellow at the Middle East Institute, Alex Vatanka, says Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khamenei will likely to consider his response very carefully. The Americans don't really seem to have a strategy. They have a number of policies, but they don't have a strategy. Khamenei can see it, and this is why he is as bold as he is. If the price that he had to pay was shown to him to increase radically, I think even Khamenei will step back. Above all, what Khamenei wants is to stay in power. That's the ultimate goal that he has. Uh, and I think if you can somehow get to him and suggest to him that if he doesn't change his policies, that 
for instance, that we can go back to the days where military strikes were on the table, he too might change his mind. Earlier this week, Iran's ambassador to the IAEA wrote to the agency saying it threatened the lives of its scientists by including their names in the report, a possible violation of the nuclear watchdog's own guidelines. The IAEA met Friday in Vienna and approved the UN Security Council's resolution condemning Iran. The resolution doesn't include sanctions, but calls on Iran to let inspectors back into the country. Reporting with Catherine Prengeman, I'm Saida Jamshidi for FSRN.